I was 10 years old, I heard the last cries of Jews on the way to the mass graves in my hometown of Nesvish. I will always remember my mother's last words to me. If by miracle you survive, you must bear witness and tell the free world what happened to us so that these events will never happen again. My name is Michael Kutz. I wrote the book and the name of the book is F by Miracle. We used to have a shortwave radio. We used to get the news from London in different languages. So I knew exactly what's happening in Europe, but the Germans with Ribbentrop, with Molotov and all of them and Stalin. And then I says to my father, and what is going to happen to us? When the Nazis invaded his childhood town in what is now Belarus in 1941, Michael Kutz's fears rapidly became horrifying reality for the town's Jewish population. The story of what happened here on October 30th, 1941, forever altered and destroyed the lives of thousands. The Jewish police went from house to house with, with the, the militia, militia to inform us that the next day we were to put on clean, warm clothes and bring our passports and birth certificates. We couldn't sleep that night. Everyone in the house sensed that something terrible was about to happen. At 7 a.m., the Jewish police went from street to street ordering people to march to the market square. By 8 a.m., we had to be standing in rows with our families. Parents made their way through the streets, some carrying small children in their arms. When my mother, my two sisters, my brother and I arrived, we were put into a row. The entire Jewish population of the town had assembled in the square. At eight o'clock sharp, the German commandant and several SS officers, one of them a red-headed high-ranking officer, began to carry out their gruesome plan. Families were soon separated, children from parents and parents from children. This caused a huge commotion of people shouting and crying. Everyone wanted to run without knowing where. My mother's last words to me were, my dear beloved child, if by miracle you survive, you must bear witness. I believe that God will protect you so that you will remain alive to tell the free world what happened to us. Shots were fired into the air, possibly intending to quiet us, but the situation only worsened. No one had any chance of escaping. Almost everyone was crying in despair at being separated from their loved ones. Hopeless, our spirits broken, we stood in line and waited for the order to march. Where we were marching, no one knew, but we all seemed to sense that we were going on our final journey. They made us to undress completely naked. A lot of young people wanted to run away, so they shoot it in the air and warning, if you run, we're going to kill you. They took hundreds of people at the group and they marched us to the grave. The Germans grabbed and the collaborators, small children from the parents, and shoot them, and with their feet, with their boots, pushed them in the grave. And as the parents want to run after the child, they were, they were killed too. The German, I looked at them, and he started to me, uh, jump, and I was frozen. So he took with the gun over the head in me, and I fell in the grave. I fell in the grave, and then dead people in top of me. So I threw out dead bodies and parts to get some air on me. And once I get there, and I hear seen all around me, I seen dead people, and some of them have dead people, and crying and everything. I couldn't see what's doing outside, up, upstairs, so I threw jet, dead bodies in top on each other, like a stepladder, and I looked around with my head, and I see nobody there, it's quiet. So I jumped out of the grave, and I ran, and I said to myself, my mother was beside me. Michael, run faster, run faster, get away, don't look backwards, forget it, just run. Kutz imagined his mother beside him and escaped into the forest. A friend of his father's took him in, hiding him in his attic. I knew one thing, my family was killed, my friends was killed, my city was killed, my youth was robbed. So I says, I have to fight back the enemies who did it to me and to all our people around. Within a few months, he became the youngest member of the partisan resistance, 
fighting and avoiding capture until the area was liberated in the summer of 1944. He immigrated to Canada in 1948, where he married and eventually wrote his inspiring tale of survival. He said to me, your book will be very popular, will be popular not only for Jewish kids, for all youngsters to learn not to take adventures, how to live life. If a 10-year-old kid could make it and survive, you could do better. <laughs> 